And we are here, present, and accounted for. Consistency is key. <laughs> Ventures of the Black Nerds. What's going on? Man, I am Baron J67, and I'm good. That's what's up, man. Yeah, we got a, a lot of Who stuff are to you? talk about. Oh, I am uh, T. Jones. <laughs> T. Jones with the bow. Hey, look. Oh. Present unaccounted for. So, as my brethren was just saying, we have a lot to talk about. Yes, we do. A lot. Yeah, so, um, do you want to start off with... I say we start uh, off with Anthem. Yeah, Dumpster Fire. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, because uh, they, they royally, in my opinion at least, some people uh, <clears throat> stand by what they did, but it's it's a lot to the story of Anthem, or even the game of Anthem, when you think about it. Now, um, I was telling you earlier. Well, well let's let's start. We got to keep it straight with everybody. I haven't bought Anthem. Yeah, I'm gonna I, wait. I haven't bought it. I'm not because I don't think I'm going to buy it right now. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I'm seriously sitting on it because for one, and we'll talk about it a little more in depth later. It's already discounted, so yeah. I can only imagine it dropping further. That's one reason. And then also, um. These games as a service types, uh, Destiny, Division, Anthem, anything in these realms, the whole loot, uh, shooting loot, open world shooting loot, open online only. Um, I I like to wait because they have this bad habit of releasing when they really shouldn't. Mm-hmm. They need to like if this game would have came out next year, if they would have pushed it back a whole year. Yeah, they would have probably had a better reception. They've been pushing it back for three, four years now. Once again, I'm look, I agree. But that just leads to the whole overall story of stop telling us about stuff you're not ready for. I, I, I At this point, I'm thinking it's on purpose. It is on purpose. Because Why not? Dude, everybody's a paid early access. Well, of course. and But with with this specific game, with Anthem at least... I feel like it should have been way more. And then you you look at your you look at these games, you look at the vision. Um I I feel like with with Destiny being like the the head of them all cuz all of these games are always compared to Destiny, never compared to each other. So it's kind of like you're looking at Destiny, you see where they messed up at and you try to adjust accordingly. But I think with these the I think the all three of these these games we're talking about Division, we're talking about Anthem, we're talking about um, Destiny, all have some big head. Um, what would you call them? Uh, backing yeah, publishers. Some, some yeah, publishers. Some super big back push publishers behind them, and it just seems like that is the common thing that they have that's that's putting them that's sending them down the wrong path. Now with and and. and- before you jump off of that, we let's let's really acknowledge that point. How is it that I can get a more complete or a more playable functioning game from an indie developer than I'm getting from my big AAA p- publishers? And I, I think I got the answer for that from me, from or from my perspective and from what we have seen, because this is not even I'm not making this stuff up. I've played Destiny for five years. I've Played division, you know. I you we seen how these how all of this, as, especially as a gaming community, we've seen how it all turned out. Um, yeah. with with these big corp or these big backings, these big publishers, they're not looking to say, okay, the lifespan of this game is ten years. No, they need a massive release every year. This is what they're looking for. They're looking for some type of massive push. Just like your Call of Duties, just like your NBA 2Ks, just like your Maddens. All of these games is one a year. Why? They rack in the money then, and then we'll figure out, we'll figure it out down the line. Come out with a deluxe edition four or five, six months down the line. It goes on sale or Christmas time. It goes on sale, then comes off sale. Then right around spring, it goes on sale again, and it stays there. And then June is when you will get the announcement for the new one. Yeah, with these games, that's what they're trying to push. I think with comp- or and looking at Destiny and comparing them to the rest of them, the difference now is Destiny have no excuses. 
they don't have a big publisher backing them anymore. Activision is gone. It is you. And they have addressed that. But looking at Anthem, looking at the division, because I and looking at the division, it looks like it's gonna be uh in a better spot. It looks like it's it's set up to to give every everything that they've been talking about up front right out the gate. <clears throat> so with Anthem, they literally gave you a roadmap, a three month, a ninety day roadmap. A ninety day roadmap. You know how ridiculous that sounds. For a game that you could have waited the three released. months and just gave me all of that stuff then. Three months from now, I was gave me a big update. Exactly. So now you're giving me stuff off of a weekly basis. They're trying to create this live this live action game where it's updated on a weekly basis. Destiny just got it right. I don't think Anthem is gonna get that right. Mm-mm. As of right now, at least, they have a long way to go because as we're about to get into, they have so many problems with their game. The game is on sale right now. It's not doing the numbers that it should have been doing the way they market it. Not as it. much they market it. Yeah. I'm just saying, you you did the most. You flew out all of these influencers, and they're telling the truth about your game now, which isn't pretty and which isn't good. So uh, I, I, I'm not going to say that it's going to completely fail. I think they do have a chance to yeah. get it right. But as Hell, of people right are now, still playing Fallout 76. Exactly. So. I don't think that I am inclined to go pick up Anthem and play it because why why sell myself short when I can just get it in three months and have everything all at once? And by that time, Division will be out. By that time, Mortal Kombat will be out. There's so many games coming out. You're, they're in. They literally came out at the worst time. Yeah, they did. They um. If they were if they knew they were gonna struggle to this level, um, which is scary because I can only imagine where it was four months ago. Yeah. Um, but if you knew you were gonna have this type of release, I would have rather you release before the holiday season, get the holiday sales, blame it on the overloaded servers, even though you are EA, one of the biggest game companies out there. Um, but you would have had a lot more um then there was less that came out around it. Yeah, but by you releasing right before another EA title, if I'm not mistaken, the division is the division you know, EA is Ubisoft. Ubisoft, which is on which EA owns a little bit, right? Uh, or did we debunk that? I don't, I don't know. know. Don't give me the line. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> but but my point is, when it comes to these types of games, these games as a service, I don't feel I'm at a point now where one, my time is so spaced and limited. I don't have the hours to throw at games like I used to. So my choices have to be a little more. Um, I got to be a little more picky. Um, then looking at the fact that if I had to pick between Destiny 2 where it is now. The Division 2 coming up and Anthem. Because they're all the as in function. They're all the same type of game. Yes, they are. Um. I would rather play between Destiny only because it's already solidified and it's already went through its paces or the Division because it's just feel it felt I had the Division feels like they are building off of the positives of Division 1. My beef with with uh, uh cuz I'm jumping around. My initial beef with Destiny 2 was they took a big dump on themselves in terms of starting over. That bothered me. Why not just immediately take off from all the positive of one and continue pushing that into two? Well, I felt that is a okay. So we can we can definitely you can we can well, definitely no, have we, a conversation we've about talked, that. We've talked about that a million times. I just but think just, with 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 that, um, and even with Anthem, this con- I was I'm getting ready. This point I'm getting ready to say goes for all three, except for the division because the division they royally messed up. And, you know, I'm not sure how big the community is. I would assume that it's not as big as the Destiny community. But, um, yeah, with Anthem, they decided to bring out these people and talk to these influencers and, you know, get their their title in and and do these interviews and make it seem like, oh, yeah, this this is the new thing. But the one thing they they didn't seem to do was uh, or. So pretty much, you guys flew out a gang of De- of Destiny play- uh, YouTubers, gang of Destiny comment uh, 
content creators. And if anyone should know how, like a game, how, if anyone should know the, the struggles of a game on release day and content throughout, should be Destiny players, Destiny content True. creators, Destiny fans. We should, uh, that you should know that. I don't, I feel like they either didn't get the information that they should have gotten or they completely either annoyed it or ignored it. I don't know. For, I'm not speaking factual. I'm just speaking based off of what I've seen. And they didn't take it into consideration. I'm just saying the one big point that gets to me is you debuted me jumping into a water, flying through the water in my anthem suit, and then tell me, oh, yeah, you can't fight underwater. That makes like no damn sense it, to me. They sold it as it was going to be a big part of the universe. Exactly. So they really did. Yeah. I just don't think. And then I, I think with just just looking at Anthem now, like not even thinking about Destiny, not even thinking the, about the division, they're in a bad spot. They're not in a, a a spot where they can't recover, but they're in a horrible spot because now the community sees something. And what we're about to get into is, is them banning people for playing their yeah. game. Now... Granted, if your moral compass is I don't cheat, I don't use hacks, I don't do anything like that, I totally get it, totally understand. Um, I'm let's let's that. not say hacks. Let's say exploits. Uh, okay, because, uh, yeah, because it, nobody exploits. hacked. From what I understand, nobody's hacked. Yeah, and no, it's it's not a hack. It's you're you're right. It, it is an exploit. So there's a big difference. Because but I'm be I'm different. speaking from a general standpoint. If, oh, okay. If gotcha. you like using mods, if you like using whatever, if you or if you don't like this stuff, then I totally understand why you would um, argue against the point I'm about to bring up. <clears throat> but with a game like Anthem, Anthem has no PvP parts into it. So just like in in most of Destiny, it's not how you play, it's how much time you play. And this goes for Diablo, your League of Legends, all of those games that have that type of content in it. It's not based off of how you play most of the time. It's, it's based how much off time how, to much grind. You, how much you play. Because as you could be the wackest player on earth. But if you have a hundred more hours than the best PvP player on Destiny, you're going to have better gear. You're going to have better equipment, yeah. better weapons, because you that's how you gain that's how you get stuff in the game by playing it. With Anthem, Anthem has no PvP aspects to it. It only has PvE. So um, player versus everything. Yeah. So with uh with the situation we're talking about, a streamer uh got got banned playing Anthem. And uh, he was doing a uh, exploit farming gear. I guess it was not intended, but they somebody found it. He did it. He got punished for it because not only he streamed it and made a, a Twitter video on it. Long story short, he gets banned. He gets perma banned. Not banned for a week, not banned for a day. He gets permanently banned. Like you need a whole new everything to play this game. Just to play the game. Uh, so. <clears throat> Uh, he he does he makes a recap on it. He talks about it. Then he comes back around again, and he uh, makes a second a follow up video to it, and he talks about how uh, he finally got in contact with somebody. They finally let him know what happened, and he was banned for doing a exploit in a game farming uh, high tier gear. Uh, in the email that they mentioned to him, it talked about how. Uh, that cheating in the community is unfair, blah, 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 because uh, because it ruins like the integrity of the game. Um, for one, your game isn't a PvP game. Sure. It's a PvE so it game. Why does it matter? <laughs> if this person, especially if a high YouTube player like that, or, or Twitch player at least, is playing your game, bringing the light to the game like the way it is, or... A, a game that is dying as it got released, it literally died as yeah. it was released. Why does it matter? It could have been that could have been done a whole different way. You instead of banning them, you could have hit them up. Hey, how'd you figure it out? Okay, cool. We're gonna uh, work on a bomb. That I think that is the bigger point. Not to cut you off, yeah, but but that is the point. If they would have took that route, that's how you build. Yeah, of course. That's how you make better. And and now now you have a big influencer that's saying, I don't know if I'm going to play your game. 
Yeah. I don't know if I'm, I want to play your game now, especially if we're going to be in his exact words, if we're going to be policed the way that I don't feel like we should in a video game, I don't want to play. I'm probably not going to put the time that I thought I was going to put into your game. I totally understand it. Now, I also understand the point of exploiting people, not having what you have to exploit, i.e. time, i.e. equipment, i.e knowledge of the game totally understand that but in a game like this where all you got to do is play it and it's not like there's no leaderboards on kills to kd and all of this type of stuff i don't think it mattered that much for the dude to get banned a conversation yeah probably yay you know this is where it comes down to so even comparing this specific situation to destiny when the glitch is found in destiny they don't ban you for it they update their game they fix it we come up thank with a thank you thank you thank <laughs> if you it's thank not, you like i remember when uh the warmind dlc came out and uh prometheus lens ran rampant through the game uh -huh. literally trials of osiris was nothing but Prometheus lands, people using that trace rifle, uh, and it was just, it was annoying. So what did Bungie do? All right, cool. We're going to give everybody the gun. <laughs> they literally yep. gave everybody the gun. All you needed was like 23 legendary shards, which everybody should have had at that point. And you bought the gun and you had it. So just like that person is using it, you can use it. Until they were able to find a patch to fix the gun, they gave it to everybody. So in that, they didn't ban anybody. They didn't, and that's kind of a different situation because that's not farming for loot. That's literally somebody using the gun that you gave me. But when you look at it, this is the it's game the you same. gave me. You gave me this game or I bought yeah. this game. Yeah. And the mistake you put in the game, I didn't put in the game. I'm just, I'm doing it. This is The I, game is all about acquiring gear. So if I found a way to get it easier, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So I... Like I said, I do understand the more the people or people who think that it's wrong, that integrity is a big part of communities. Totally understand it. But I also understand the side where people can say, listen, man, they're in this specific game. I don't beat anybody. The only thing yeah. is I get you really randomly don't. dropped gear from activities by playing the activities. Now, you actually bring up a major point that we did, we've we never discussed. Having an online-only game without any leaderboards, is it almost pointless? No. I'm a, no in this, in this era because it's not about the... To be honest, right now, it's not about leaderboards. It's about yeah, we what don't, you got. It's about the guns you got. I think people ah, the would, cosmetics yeah, and the people gear. Would okay, that makes sense. I, like when you look at when you look at Fortnite or you look at like PUBG, uh those games are meant for that. Why? Because they're so fast paced. Literally you die, start up mm -hmm. another one, and you go about your thing. Uh you wanna go, okay, let's see how far I can last. Let's see my average, you know, my average placing when I get into a match. Stuff like that. How many games I've won. In these games, it, that's not the point. The point in these games is to craft or acquire gear and weapons and beat big bosses. Normally, normally their most bosses in some of these games are bullet sponges. So it's sure. about, okay, how fast can we kill this boss to get to the gear or get to the loot drop? It's not about like stats and stuff. So, but some of these games that put them in there, like for example, Division is going to have that. Division Destiny. is going to have some type of stat. Yeah. Destiny do have stats at the end of the at the end of the matches, but it's not like no in game leaderboard that you, you have to go to a, a API outside of the game to see your stats, like how many kills you got in this raid or how many raids have you done. There's different websites, which is a great thing because it's a commodity outside of the game that people are profiting off of. And it, keep, and it keeps the world going. Exactly. It keeps the world turning. So this company decides, hey, I'm going to make a, a... Maybe you're tired of playing with the weakest people, people who don't know anything. So we're going to create a website where you can check their raid stats. <laughs> if, they're, if they don't have four completions, if they've never completed it, I'm not playing with you. 
So hey, you see they, what I'm saying? that stuff is so real. I do not miss those Bro, days. I did oh, not. God. I didn't understand how important it was until I got into that situation. Me and me and my brother in law were playing, and uh, we created the party. We were finding the people. In the list, it says, "Know what to do." Dude jumped in. We make it all the way to the boss. I don't know why we didn't check, but the dude just kept acting funny, like dying in weird spots. So I finally was like, yo, have you have you beaten this? He was like, yeah. So I was like, <laughs> I'm like, hold on, man. I go to the website. I type his name in, and he has zero completions. I mean, I must have screenshotted and sent it over to <laughs> to my brother-in-law. <laughs> He was like, yo, man, you ain't got to lie to us, dog. <laughs> like, hey, no, but but real talk, I um, I just feel like I would, uh, there's there's so many other games to play. Yeah. yeah. There's so many other games, not even with new releases, but just stuff that's already out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people who play these games, too, are very competitive. Yeah. So it's like, you want to I want to carry you. I want yeah. you to see the damage that I can do to these bosses and how fast I can get through these these trash mobs and stuff like that. Whereas in a game comparing it to like comparing it to like a Fallout, right? Got Where you. Fallout, you can play the game, you can go find stuff, you can craft things like that. But you don't there's no hero moments in Fallout. You know what I'm saying? It's you, your companion I didn't play 76, so I'm not sure if there could... I'm, I'm pretty... It's a PvP game. So I'm pretty sure there can be... Or PvE, but playing with other players' games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are hero moments in it. But comparing it to a game like Destiny, because that's pretty much all I play, uh, there's hero moments in that, where you're the last guy... You're the last guy alive, and you either have to kill the person, or you gotta revive one of your teammates, teammates so you have a, guys have a better chance of doing damage... There's more of those in these type of games than any other game pretty much out there. You know, sure. you can you can you can say Madden or you can say these sports games because yeah, there's hero moments out there. You throw a Hail Mary and you your wide receiver goes up and catches it in the end zone and bang, hero moment right there. But um yeah, so but going back to the leaderboard thing, or matter of fact, oh uh, let's not go off tangent. Let's stay on path. Uh so and it, so uh, rounding or uh, rounding up our topics on Anthem, I think Anthem did a disservice to their game by banning that guy. I also think that they are, and multiple people, yeah, and multiple other people. But he he was just the more notable one. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of other people got banned, but I think they can learn something from this. This is this is this is a teachable moment. Don't just go out and ban somebody for exploiting a PVE game, and then. Even you know what? Let's take one more step. Even if it was PvP, even if there was leaderboards and all these other things, the game hasn't even been out two weeks. Yeah, but there's a okay. So when you say that, if you're breaking rules, where I'm yeah, because you signed a license agreement when you hit okay. Yeah, so they hit an agreement. I got you. No, I'm 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 with you on that. But in the spirit of what it is. Let's 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 play that card. In the spirit of gaming, you released a game that I purchased at full price. You tell me it's ready to play. The game tells the console and the PC tell me it's ready to play. <laughs> it says, "Click this button, ready to play now." And I play it, and I find this not by going into the code, not by going through the back room and back walls of the game. Yeah. I'm playing the game normally. And I find a way to bump your system, which means it was already there. I didn't put it there. And you boot me. Not boot me, you ban me. You 86. Come on, man. That's why I, that's my I, problem. But, I, I but legally, I know what you're saying. Yeah. I got you. No, and Spirit this of the is game, more, I got you. This is more to the, the PV, even if it was PVP. That That's what separates it for me. If the dude was hacking in Call of Duty, yeah, now we got a That's different. That's justifiable yeah. for me because yeah, you're taking 100%. advantage of something that gives you a a heads up on everybody else in the lobby. Got you, hundred percent. But with this game, it's me versus AI. 
I'm only yeah. shooting enemies. Like I ain't shooting. So I found a faster way to milk your AI to get these items to get in to your mad that, that you made. Ext- you you didn't hear about it? They they literally it's it takes people. It's it's hard for people to get gear. So they act, they put like a bump in the game, but it, it was more like a glitch. So people were getting like gear out of the yin yang, just everything they were getting. Oh, and so then they they came back and reverted it because it wasn't meant to be. And see, and remember, folks, we, you know we're. I like to be as straight up as possible. I have not played Anthem outside of the beta, yeah, the closed and the open beta. I nor am I planning on buying it anytime soon, especially seeing how it launched. I'd rather play all the other backlog games I got. Hell, I just made the mistake of picking up the the Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Wow. So I don't know why I did that to myself, but I got it for the low low. The low but, low. <laughs> but um but no when I, but oh go ahead go ahead. No nah, man it just folks we gotta as consumers we have to do better at our part. Yeah. We gotta buy this, smarter. I am. I am convinced that this is the way now, and it scares this me. This is the way, bro. That, like, this, one get of with the, the top program. game on the top game on being streamed, which I think is Fortnite again. Fortnite, one of the top games out right now. Fortnite, it's still early access, people, and y'all dumping money into a game that they, if they really wanted to, they could say, ah, we don't, we're not gonna release. Nah, we're done. And you, and they, and we can't do nothing about it because we know the game is early access. Every time you turn it on, it says that the game may change. Da 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 da. Bro, are you kidding me? No, it's not even early access. It's well beta. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's called early access. Right. Fortnite, I think it's called- Fortnite is the top viewed game. Okay, top game right now in Twitch. People, the. <sighs> Folks, pay attention to what's happening. Think about the market. I feel like a madman. Like, and then I got the hair to match. Like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? We look what we're doing. This free game ain't free. They making their money. That's well, like, <laughs> man. No, I think, I, but I can tell you this, though. I think uh, comparing that type of game to Anthem, people. Are going to all or express Fortnite has its it's solidified. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Solidified. Every it's time got a whole generation, it and I'm scared for that generation. Five. And mm-hmm. hey, it's going to be there. People mm-hmm. enjoy Fortnite more than they enjoy the games we enjoy, i.e., the games we've been talking about today. True. Uh, because I I, I want to say it's because of the money that they can put into it. Because now now let's let me go into this topic real quick before we skate on to the next one. I watched a video today where a guy, his main goal in Apex Legend, and think about it, Apex Legend is a more complete game than Anthem. True. Apex yeah. Legend is a more complete game than Fortnite. Yeah. 100%. And Fortnite wrote the damn book on how to how to survive as a free to play game. <laughs> and even and half of Fortnite ain't even free. <laughs> That's the but, crazy part. Nevertheless, I watched a video today on YouTube. Uh the the guy, it was a it was a great watch. He talked about how uh he decided to uh like he he broke his light goal on a video, so he decided to do another video talking about and he was doing like pack openings. So he was doing like thousand pack openings and stuff like that. So he was dropping money in this game. The guy ended up for the video that I watched. He ended up unlocking every piece of item in the game of of Apex Legends. Right, uh, Apex Legends is what I meant to say. Uh, he ended up locking every piece of item from the store, from what you could craft, from all the from most of the characters. Uh, in the game of Apex Legends. And you know how much money, at that point, how much money he spent? How much? A little over $1,000. <laughs> now, I'm, 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 I'm sad. Now, I, I think about that, so folks. I feel so bad saying Hear this. Hear what that man is but, saying. But, I feel so bad saying this. But if you think about it, that is cheaper than Battlefield, that is cheaper than uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. 
Yeah. <laughs> that would be cheaper than uh, uh I would say that would be cheaper than well because of the seasons. It, it might be go che- back, it might be cheaper than Call of Duty. If you go back and uh yes, it would be cheaper than Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. If you go back of all the seasons of Fortnite up until now, it'd be cheaper than that. If somebody decided to buy all of the pieces of gear, it would be cheaper than that. And that if Apex Legends has only been out for weeks. And he unlocked everything for thousand dollars, <laughs> and it was his social experiment that he did. He dropped all that money on it. Now would I do some shit like that? No, nah. I'm not doing that. Just let somebody want to sponsor me to do I'm, it, and then I'll I'm do good. it in a heartbeat. I can't wait to sell out for y'all. <laughs> if I could write <laughs> it off, I probably would. I just, <laughs> I just it, so sitting here looking at that Apex Legends is in a better, and it's. A free to play game, and yeah. It's cosmetics, it's in a better spot than some of the games that we talked about. It's just an overall better shooter. I mean, we already know Titanfall was a better shooter than a lot of the games out. It was just, yeah. it was fun. Um, now, my now, it, I, I really feel like the old timey guy telling you guys, like, watch out, well, back in my the future's day. coming. <laughs> no, but um, t- back in my day. There was no DLC. The game just came as it was. But, uh, um, uh, but you know what? That is depressing, though. We really do come from the time frame of a DLC was a whole nother experience yeah, of like it was a whole new game. It was anywhere from twenty to thirty more hours of mm-hmm. gameplay. Um, we we really did come from that that realm, that era. We came from the era where you had no you. There was no room for mistake. Yeah, you put the game out. And yeah. that was that. that if was you it. messed up on the game, it was over for you. Yeah. That's the era we come from. Now, the era we're in now, they can afford, Anthem can afford to survive. And that's in, <laughs> no, okay, that, that's that's the Destiny the can survive. Division that's the, 1 can survive. No, back in our and, day, that shit is done. And that's, that scares me because now what it turns into it's, okay, Steam even had that problem. Remember Steam for a while, they cut back on the indie games because people were just putting out shit. Yeah. They were just throwing shit out. It like, ah, like uh, here's a game. Shooting one. It was some yeah, here's a stuff. game. Yeah. Here's a game. Oh, I made a game. You, you tap the screen and it, it lights up. Here's a game. But no, but they were running into that problem and now we're getting shit just thrown at us. Yeah. Now, once again, I'm not saying Apex Legend is shit. I'm not saying Fortnite is shit, but what I am saying is the practice of knowingly Half giving me an shit. incomplete game. The fact that Anthem before the release can show me a 90 day plan of giving me the full game they promised. A 90 day plan. <laughs> so you, but but what's wasn't scary even a roadmap is for a year. It was 90 days, three months. We waited years for this game. You could have at least took the three months. To- Game That's what I'm saying. Stop putting street dates out for games you ain't ready for. Yeah. Stop putting street dates out for games that are going to need a 24 gig update. But now, wrapping this back all full circle, I, I would have to assume that this is because of these big end publishers. Because it's how to milk out as much money as possible up until the next one needs to come out. Because True. when you think about these, these type of games, this is why I'm so glad that Bungie actually slightly addressed it because they have a new one of their new uh contents dropping for their annual pass tomorrow so um they slightly address the roadmap for a bungee without activision and mm. i was happy and from what i heard now there's no excuse for bungee anymore bungee gets all the backlash it isn't yeah. activision and bungee anymore it's just straight bungee but this also puts bungee in a in a better spot to to have creative control and ideas and financial control over everything that's going on with their game. It's their game. So now when you look at Anthem, you look at the division, they have these big backings behind them. It's how to let's, let's see how can we make the most money in the least amount of time before we come out with another huge release like this to then do the cycle all over again. Yeah. The most money in the short amount of time just to do it all over again for the third time. My Anthem 3, Anthem 4. 
these games, if you think about it, these games could be ran like your Dota's, like console versions. And we've had this conversation before. Console versions of your Dota's. Or, I'm sorry, not Dota's. Your League of Legends, your Di- Diablo's. These type of games where they run forever. Yeah. They just get People big, are still playing them and they've been out for drops. years. They literally can run like that. But do they want to run like that? No. They just want to continue to... Uh, Oh no! You, well, for Bungie, it was a four-year process, but the, it was on a ten-year plan. And that was and well you, known from when Destiny One first came out. Yeah, they announced that Anthem. At I'm not Street. sure what they got going on with that. I'm not sure what by uh, what uh, Division has going on with that. But Division One still had life to give. Yeah, they just were making the turnaround. So imagine if they would have kept on rocking, kept because people were streaming it like crazy. Exactly, big content creators were getting back into it. So it was like, imagine if they just kept rocking with it. P- the PC world was growing at an exponential, at a great rate at that point because everybody was getting high end PCs. New equipment was coming out. Put out a bigger update, even if they had to charge. Hey, listen, we gonna have to figure something out, but let's charge. Let's give you this huge content drop let's open up a whole new city from where we're at now and give it to the people and let them pay for it and this will give more light on a game five years from down that line if destiny if division one was still going it could have then they could have said all right let's come out with a new one we can learn from our mistakes on a bigger better scale yeah and, and survive that way but no it's about these short spurts this is why, and I've said that plenty of times on here. This is why I don't buy Madden. So I don't buy 2K like that. This is why I, I, I'm slowing down on Call of Duty. We bought Call of Duty this year because I, I think I only, I'm only going to buy Treyarch Call of Duties mm. because I like Treyarch. Treyarch is dope. And you know, you know what? Um, hmm. I overall, I've said it a million times. It, it was a I lot mean, there. I, it was a lot there. No, so, no, no. I, I mean. We've been on this for a minute, but period. I've always felt that, not always, but as in the last couple of years, we need to be smarter as consumers, and we need not to let companies get away with bullcrap. Um, don't give me a sixty dollar game with twenty dollars worth of content, and then tell me that after I buy the DLC season pass, the rest of the game you told me that was going to be on there is going to come out. Yeah. That that's all I ask, you know. <laughs> yeah, if the DLC is created already, come out the, or come out the get. Oh my God, when they found the DLC on games, when lie they find the me, oh, bro. lie to bro, me, bro, <laughs> give me a best lie ever, please. Lie Cause to that, me. You, you know me, I'm quick to quit. I'm like, oh, I'm not playing yeah. no more. Yeah, I, I just I don't I find that very uh it's very deceitful when you do that because. We're expecting to... Okay, so... All right, well, I was going to get into a topic. It's time to move on. Anyway, yeah, it's very deceitful when you go about it that way because we're expecting something, but we don't get it until mm-hmm. four or three months later where I should have been had it because I've been new about it type deal. So, yeah. Well, okay. Now, turning up to a happier note, getting mm-hmm. off of this, let's jump into a company who rarely lets us down. Rarely, but it does happen. Um, let's get into Nintendo's and oh, well, not Nintendo's, but Pokemon Game Freak, Game Freak, man. Thank you, they Game Freak, game, game Freak, man. Game Freak. Now, it looks like we're heading over to Britain. Um, we're heading over to uh, yeah, I forgot what the land is called, but we're getting Pokemon. I- Sword and Shield. And shield. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I did see the review, I did not. Break it down um, as much as I wish I could have. I'm talking about remembering the place, like you're talking about remembering the three mm-hmm. starters. I do. Uh, I know that the fire one was a bunny. Yes. I believe the grass one was a chimpanzee Looked like a monkey. Or a monkey. Yeah. yeah. So and the water so here was like I'll break it down. So we got we got gro- uh, Grookey, a grass type monkey. We got Scorbunny, a fire type bunny. Uh, Sobble. It looks like a water type, like um, let's see what it is. Um, oh, I you even, it's you even a water that. lizard Pokemon that shoots out attacks as it hides itself in the water. Yeah, it looks like a tadpole. Yeah, it really does. And I like let me tell. Okay, so for me, 
when I'm growing up, um, I always picked the fire type as a kid because it, they usually look the coolest. Really? That's for me. That's starting off when I first started playing. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Who didn't want a damn dragon? But <laughs> I, like, it's like, oh, do you want a fire breathing lizard or a water shooting turtle? Hmm. <laughs> I, I always, that's that's how it was for me. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you my first playthrough of uh, Red because that was the second one I got. My first Pokemon game was Yellow. My first playthrough of Red, um, I picked Charmander and realized that I need to start all over and started over and grabbed Squirtle. <laughs> now, yes, because you kept running, you couldn't beat Brock. Yeah. But let me tell you why. As I got, as I develop my rpg skills Mm -hmm. as i develop my uh my stat skills my my pokemon skills my i became a better trainer a more proficient trainer yeah i would pick um i would pick the water type or no i i would still pick between water and fire because you could always find air or um or grass. Yeah. Every every game you start off with air and grass. I want a game that starts me off in an area that's like the desert. Like start me off where it makes sense to want to get a Bulbasaur. Where I gotta where, pick I gotta pick either Bulbasaur or Squirtle. Yes. It, like force my hand. But when you give me nothing but forest to start off with. Of course, I'm gonna pick the damn fire type. The Viridian Forest is what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure. I, uh, I, yeah, I learned that in in going back to Red. I learned that I then had to, I could pick anyone I want, but I had to catch a Caterpie and I had to level it up. Yes, I had to big get it facts. to level ten so it can evolve into a Butterfree. Once it learned yep. confusion, I was able to take on anybody. Bro. Hey, why was that the grand strategy? You know what's so bad? I bored myself to death with the Pokemon. Um, what was the island ones that I thought was trash? Oh, the uh, 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 see, we don't even know what's called. Low, oh, uh, hello, uh, 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 <laughs> Southern Moon. No, Southern Moon was the island one. Yes, no, that was the last one. Yes, Southern Moon, Ultra mm-hmm. Sun, Ultra Moon. Yes, Lunala. Oh. Lunala oh. was the the. <laughs> you, got, you sure? Well, I got your Game Boy, so. <laughs> yeah, you do got my Game Boy, um. But no, let me. So first off, that this is my one hope for the game. It's not super basic, to the point because I know initially the game is set for like what twelve and under. Like yeah. let, let's be honest here, but I don't want it to be so handholdy that I want to like jump off a cliff because i just like it it really <sighs> you need to play sun or your moon over again you really do you need to give it a better shot with better pokemon <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for you dog i got whatever I, you want you know what ruined me with sun and moon um i found the random pokemon trade i forgot what it's oh, called yeah the um where you could deposit your... You, yeah, you can just exchange random Pokemon. Yeah. That ruined my whole experience because I ended up getting a bunch of Pokemon that I had no business having. Yeah. I think they From should, all over the world. They should lock it until you beat the, the Elite Four. I'm, I'm, I'm that's, that's a solid point. Because after at that point of beating the Elite Four, you've gone through with the Pokemon that the game allows you to catch. Yeah. And then... But when you do it like that, you can easily go in there and get yourself... A super strong six over IV the top Pokemon off the rip, and yep. Which I did, you, you know. Now you're just obliterating stuff, and you know, you get Pokemon that you should not have within the game already. I wouldn't be mad at that, but I also understand why they do it. Hey, this is one of the games where it's like, hey, listen, we're gonna give you the whole game right now. No, pun yeah, intended. I ain't throwing shots, I'm just letting you know how it is. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for them. I have. I want to give no opinions on Game Freak and Pokemon. Mm. I want them to do what they do because they do it every year or not every year, every however long, you know, however time. And this would be the first uh, RPG Pokemon on Switch. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, um, uh, now the the game is on this, this, uh, well, I would consider 
your Switch a uh, full on console because the way it re- the way it acts. it really is. So, hey, but hey, but let me cut you off though. What a smooth ass way to force people to buy your console. <laughs> hey, what a hey! They were actually really nice about it. Mm-hmm. They were actually really nice about but it. They made it be known last year. They made yeah. it be known before that's what I, the new. That's Pokemon, what I'm saying. Uh, EV and they, Pikachu came out. They they. They could have came out day one yeah. when the Switch released Pokemon. Boom! <laughs> Y'all want that new Pokedex? I bet you do. Oh man! Stupid. Oh, now they're gonna have an interact. You know they gotta have an interactive Poke Bank. They have to. They they have to be. You, you have, have to, be able to advance to with your, all of this because they do it every time. From Game Boy to Game Boy Advance to all the new ones, they've always had some way to trade up your Pokemon. Or do something, or move them on up a different way. Um, I'm I'm excited for that. I'm not excited for it to come out day one because mm. you don't want people to, you know, do the same exact thing we're talking about. Transfer up their super strong Pokemon to this Pokemon game, and then be able to just run through the game and figure everything out day one. Even though that's the era we live in, I think they should. I'm more worried about people getting wiped. I'm game errors and whatnot. I'm I'm that's. See, knock on wood, dog. <laughs> I, hey, man, it, it's out there, bro. Like we've know these I don't things speak happen. Those days, <laughs> it's never. See, knock on wood, dog. Jesus, the person that's happened to. Just remember, I knocked on wood for you, dog. <laughs> man, but um, nah, I'm. I'm just like I said. I'm excited for Pokemon. I have no input at all because every Pokemon game has had. You've had the benefits to beat the game. Unlock everything in the game and then still think about it. No matter how much I say that Pokemon Silver and Gold wasn't up to par for other Pokemon games, um, it's still, you still had the ability to get the three starters. You still use, like we're talking about the starters, we're, st- we're talking about the legendaries that are in those games. I had to transfer them over to my Sun and Moon. So, I have the complete Pokédex for my gold and silver, complete Pokédex for my red and go or my red and blue and so forth. So, um most systems that people love and enjoy in Pokémon came out of gold and silver. What? Most systems. Bro, I don't care about the systems. That's Cyndaquil, what make you love Pokémon. Cyndaquil was trash. Tell me he was he was Lugia and Ho. Who's who? The hell is using Lugia and Ho? Ho Ho. <laughs> who you using them? They in your top five? Are they in your top five Pokemon? I'm gonna be uh, honest. I don't any, think any legendaries oh, are in my top five. Rayquaza's I always thought all the legendaries not. was kind of boo boo sauce. You crazy, like, Rayquaza dog? He's he, he has his he own just tier. looked like a green Gyarados, a Lego Ray, version. Ray, Rayquaza <laughs> has his own tier. They created a whole new tier. Called Re- never used Re- for him. You can't Rayquaza, use him. Rayquaza looks like some a ninety nine cent store version of Gyarados. Oh shit! <laughs> Gyarados looks like the ninety nine cent version of Rayquaza. <laughs> oh my god! But um, I I guess I just take it personal because gold and silver are some of my most fondest memories playing Pokemon. Yeah, because you're weird. Hey, it happens. Yeah, you're, you're you're weird. I used to couldn't wait to go to the Pokemon. I'm Center. just saying, name one or name, Pokemon uh, daycare center. Go ahead. Name name one Pokemon from Silver and Gold that's in your top five. Wasn't that where you came into Mil Tank? Mil Tank when was. when you would get rolled out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what Mil Tank was in there? Roll out! Oh my god, <laughs> that was worse than Magnitude. Rollout was Pokemon Gold and Silver's magnitude, bro. Yeah. It would just ruin your whole day. Like, w- wait a second, Bill Tank still, still rolling, rolling out. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is still rolling. Like, why is this cow beating my whole squad's ass with she, one that, move? That gym leader was one of uh, made it to IGN's list of like the hardest gym leaders. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, <laughs> Mil Tank name, but yeah, that Mil Tank, that Mil Tank was super strong. <laughs> and then the cow looked all happy, but it be fucking you up. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Come get this Mil Tank. 
<laughs> and then and then I think it sold its milk on the game. Wasn't that one yeah. of the items? Yeah. <laughs> you were able to, you were able to get you were able to buy milk tanks milk. <laughs> <laughs> Want some pancake, bitches? <laughs> Stop, man. Chill. Oh god. Bro, that cow used to be beat by ass. <laughs> For anybody who's played Pokemon that far back, you know that cow was spanking that ass. And Lord, don't let it attack first. Oh, <laughs> oh you thought your quick your quick claw was gonna help? <laughs> enough, man. Enough. No, the quick claw will not save you. Mil Tank will take that ass. Enough, dog. <laughs> you, need, you need a milk tank emote. <laughs> Bro, oh, I, I should get a Bill Take poster. <laughs> I'm going to get one that's going to say wanted for abuse. <laughs> okay, all right. We need to move on, dog. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. But, okay, okay. I hope Bill Take makes a comeback. They should do an evil version, but that's just my, my plan. Okay. Now, whew, which one are you going to buy? Sword or shield? I, I think I'm going to buy sword. Now, see, I think everybody and their mama going to buy sword because you know shield's already on sale. You can get it. <laughs> <laughs> IGN had it up, and I'll find the link. I want to say it was one of the daily deals. If you pre-order it, you can get it on sale. <laughs> I'm going to pick shield because I think the only way they're going to sell it <laughs> Is if they put a Pokemon that's just so kick ass yeah. that you can only get it in Shield. I think that's what they're gonna do. Cause ain't nobody trying to buy Shield when there's sword out there. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> you, even Lord of the Rings, they ain't even do that. You get my axe, my bow, and my sword. Yeah, <laughs> like, nobody said my shield. <laughs> like, nobody <laughs> nobody on a damn shield. Hey, look, check out that meme. Uh, oh, is it real thing? <laughs> Okay, listen, the link to what I just showed him will be in the description below. <laughs> if you want to laugh, please go to the description right now. Click the top link. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you've been listening to this this oh. far, you will be laughing as well. Oh, my God. Hey, I, that oh. I had seen that a while back when I was doing my <laughs> Oh, oh, hey, go. y'all gotta understand that cow was ruining childhoods. Yeah, and I think that was still at the time where you could call Game Freak and get help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, call. okay. All right, so we probably oh, got time bro. for one more topic. It'll be short and sweet. Oh, Jesus! Um, but I, I did wanted to touch on. Um, or what did you want to talk about? Because I, I I'd seen the Halo thing in there. I also seen Cyberpunk. Oh, okay. So there's at this one. point there's only been two major things confirmed for E3 2019. Wipe your face though, you got tears like. Bro, oh my god, I ain't laugh like that in a minute. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm really trying to hold it together for you guys, but um, uh, I think I just took up like five minutes straight laughing. Yeah, you did. But um, but Cyberpunk 2077 and Halo Infinite are the only two games confirmed right now, and we'll constantly do updates as more games are added oh, and more updates are coming up for E3 2019. Okay. Um, who pulled out? Was it Sony that pulled out? Sony pulled out. Yeah, so Sony is not doing anything, folks. They have made it clear. Which I'm cool with. Me too. Take a break. If you ain't got nothing to say, don't say nothing. Don't ruin the evening by yeah. hyping it up, spending all this money, you know, I'm tired. getting everybody you gassed get up, and you ain't got right. nothing. Exactly. I'd rather you come out with something. I'd rather you take a big break. If you don't come back for a few years, fine. Just come back when there's something major to release. Exactly. Oh. And um, you know, but you know what that tells me, though, right? No they're new prepping for this, this year. 
No, hey, but guess what? That just tells me they prepping for the new console. I would be mad at it. I'm not mad at it. No, me neither. I'm not mad at all. Year. I you know what I really hope happens? I hope they wait until next E3. Ne- not this one coming up, but the year after. And I hope they announce it 2020 and it releases holiday 2020. Or not even holiday. I hope it releases like fall, September. Boom. And then you just yeah, get they're, they're not gonna want to release it uh holiday. No, they're gonna because remember who did that? Xbox One. Xbox. Xbox One release holiday, which yeah. was terrible. Because ain't nobody about to buy a no brand new Xbox that's not on sale. Especially, you know what? Oh, that's what we should talk about real fast because we only got a few minutes left. Xbox is making a lot of strange but beneficial moves to people who own multiple consoles. So they I, I think we talked about it before, but if we haven't yeah, we talked about um, it last week with yeah. the, uh the games from Xbox being playable on uh the Switch. Well I don't um yeah they're I forgot what game they were talking about scale bound and a, something else. But Xbox Live as a whole, the service is now um they're talking about making it on Switch, which we talked about. Yeah. But now my next question is is it gonna be all their indie titles? That are Xbox exclusive? Are they going to be rolling into, like, am I going to pretty soon be playing um, Absolver? Am I going to be playing Massive Chalice? Am I going to yeah. be playing? I don't think it's Xbox. Ex- I wouldn't say it's Xbox exclusive. Exclusive, my bad. Yeah, I would say that it's uh, games that, like the the examples that you're using. I'm not. Yes. I'm not even 100 percent sure how to say it. I would just assume that it's these these constant- smaller titles. Games, these smaller titles on these consoles being reverted over to hey, through one service, which is your Xbox Live. This is possibly how it could go through Xbox Live. You're able to sign up, create an account, and get these games onto your Switch via your Xbox Live. Bro, I pray. Because you know what? I'm not going to lie. When I first picked up my Switch, and I think I've talked about it before, um, I feel like if you don't have a specific title you're looking for going in, yeah, it's almost a waste of money. Yeah. Um, like I, I truly feel that. Um, I floated around with it for a while. I was playing Wasteland Two. Um, I was playing a bunch of different indie titles, but then I finally did what I should have been done and picked up uh, uh, Breath of the Wild: Legend of Zelda. And uh, I said that backwards, but it's all good. Y'all know what I meant. Um, made the mistake of accidentally beating it. Put that down. Um, I haven't been big on Mario games, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think we it have, just I it, have, it just doesn't call me. I outgrew them. Yeah, it doesn't call me like it used to. Yeah. Um, it, it's not a it's not an itch of mine to oh I gotta get the new Mario like that. Those days are like Sonic falls in the same realm with Sonic. Of me. course, it's just I'm, I, I'm to be honest, I'm more excited for my kids. Yeah, my kids get it and they can't be the level, and it's like, come on, let me show you something real quick. And like that, you know, I'm I'm excited for that part. So, so what you know, what last couple minutes, what game you gonna start your kids with? I'm gonna start my son for a fact on Sonic. Got it, he gotta go Sonic, and you gotta get he ain't gotta, you don't have to beat the boss, but you gotta get all the way up to the boss. Mm. And I'm gonna let him figure it out. For my daughter, um, I'm thinking something like Spyro. Ah, yeah. Spyro is is a game that I've been really contemplating if I want to get for her on our on my PlayStation Three, or I mean, I mean, I, on my PlayStation Four. I do have a PlayStation Four downstairs, so um, get one for my daughter to play on PlayStation Four. Play the new Spyro or whatever. Uh, my my wife likes Rayman. Okay. So uh, either either I'm, I'm either thinking of Spyro or Crash Bandicoot for my daughter. Mm, those are good ones. Yeah, I sat down and wrote it all out and did all of them. No, that no that that's solid picks. Like I'm thinking um, for for my kids, they're they're. Mm, I'm I, thinking I, some I, whatever. I'm thinking whatever platformers are kind of there. Okay. Like I've seen, um, like the Lego games. Um, yeah, I don't want it to be too cheesy and mm-hmm. too kiddy, but I mean they're kids, so they probably had the time of their life. So I'm thinking I'm gonna start them off with the Lego games. See, I, the one thing I don't want, cause all right, so like my my nieces and nephews, 
or let me just say my nephews, they're to this, they're at this age now where they're playing video games and they're heavily playing video games. I'm talking about they're playing Fortnite, one V one in each other, beating each other, beating and all this stuff, right? Even destroying me. Yeah, hey, uncle, you want to one V one me? Play it, destroy me. I ain't playing this no more. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're so all over the place that they can't, like they can't stick to this game right now. They can't sit down and game for two hours on this one specific game. Gotcha. They gotta go do something else. They gotta go. So, for example, playing Destiny two with him, and he goes, "You want to come play Destiny one with me?" I'm like, "What?" And he like goes, that makes no sense. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what he wants to do, and I'm like, "Nah." And he'll be like, "All right, well, I'll talk to you later," and that's that'd be that. Or you want to come play Fortnite with me? Nah, I don't want to play Fortnite. Well, um. You know, now that you mention it, that is true. Even with all my younger, anytime yes. I, I would play with my younger cousins, that's what would happen. Exactly. I'm going to try to avoid that with my kids because with my son, at least, I, I think I learned the, the most valuable lesson in gaming playing Sonic. The mm -hmm. fact that I couldn't save, the fact that you only get a certain amount of lives and you have to figure out how to unlock the other lives and that you supposed to save your lives up until this point and that these games have a certain mechanic mom the, the the enemies don't move once i learned that the enemies don't change like position and state and this is how you every time you run and it's into them, now it's pure map, skill and memory exactly I so want, you're built you want to build them up as a gamer exactly got you i got you 100 percent. and no and that's and that's why i wanted to like uh i started the first game, sad but true, my kid played was um, Castle Crashers. Mm, okay. Because um, I was going to put a game in front of her. I was going to let her play, like, Stardew Valley or something like that. And even though I knew she wouldn't understand it, but I think it was just more about having the controller in her hand. But she was like, oh, can I make them fight? And I was like, oh, that's what you, okay. <laughs> so that's what you're looking for. Yeah, she's trying to catch so, these hands. She want these I, hands I, to Yeah, so I put the most halfway decent which is probably the worst game i could have gave her mm -hmm. but um i put castle crashers in her hand and she was having so much fun like making the character move around making them jump making them that like you said those connections like oh i can't just tap this button to beat that person i need to do something else exactly what else do i need to do and i'm like oh well when they swing this hard you're supposed to do this and it just now of course she's not gonna get it mm -hmm. she's only two but yeah but it's just the fact that her wheels are turning and it's already like that thought is there. So that's good. Like, man, I think the next savage thing you could have did was start on with like um, Mega Man. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. That would that would break I, a kid. That was on that the was list. the Dark Souls of its time. Contra that, Mega Man. That literally was on the list. Like, yeah, it was on the list of games like that. Bomberman, Ooh. Tetris. Tetris was mm. on there, too. Uh, but I feel I felt like with with the games that I chose with my son, at least I want him to, cause with Sonic, Sonic was the true game that I got to like play and devour on my own. And mm. when I say on my own, I, I really mean me and my cousin together. And I'm talking about, I got so good at the first stage all the way up until the mission before you fight the boss. I was perfect. I've had perfect runs on those. I'm talking about saving all my lives you know, running through the, skipping the parts that I needed to skip, doing the, uh, and this is uh, Sonic Adventures 2, so you do the, like, the ring stage, the secret yeah. stage, and, you you know, you gotta, like, don't get hit by the bombs and stuff. All of that, I vividly remember, I vividly remember having to restart it because somebody went in there and kicked the, the Sega. Or somebody mm -hmm. went in there and turned it off. Me being like having fumes upset at somebody for doing that so i want my son i want really want my son to experience that because i, I i'm just assuming that he's probably going to gain more than my daughter because my daughter's more into doing her doll's hairs and stuff like that she does sometimes we will we will sit down and play like uh sonic racing and yeah yeah, all yeah. these games but she's more into her dolls playing kitchen stuff like that with my son now i'm hoping that he he and not, it's not going to be a job. Like I'm. Yeah. I, I vividly thought about this because 
this is how I went through it. So I kind of want my son to experience the same way I went through it. <clears throat> so like even Legos, like sitting down, creating stuff with Legos. I want to do all of that stuff. Granted, my son's only eight months now. So I still yeah. got some time to develop all yeah, yeah. Put it to play. But it's something I sat down and wrote out before I said, okay, I finalized what games they're going to play, blase, blase, because I wanted them to go through that experience. Like anybody, any you see these kids, they're all super amazing at fucking Fortnite and excuse my language and all of these, they're, they're gods. They're gods on these games. Yeah. <clears throat> Some of them don't even know what a Sonic is. Some of them don't even know what a Mega Man is. Because just they, bypassed all the staples of the gaming exactly. world. Exactly. So they just jumped into Fortnite. You want to 1v1 me? No, I don't want to 1v1 <laughs> me. Miniature God? I don't want to play you. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I, I really thought about it, and I, I chose uh, those two games for my kids. So that's fair, man. That's solid stuff, dude. Well, let's end it on that note. We're hitting, a, we're well over time. Yeah, but, we are. Um, dude, much love to you guys hanging in there with us, and we are getting it all together, and we are here. Consistency is key. Consistency. And I want to send a shout out to Tone Deaf Network for blasting us across the ether and the universe. Much love to the folks over there. Please go check them out. The links are below. Um, Nerds Noir is up and running. Nerds um, Noir, you guys check can, it out. You guys can go pick up different gear from there. Everything from t-shirts to coffee mugs, hoodies, tank tops, all, pillows, all that. Um, yeah, and then my, listen, my man's been working very hard on that. At least yeah. check it out. Yeah, just go look at it. I mean, it'd be cool if you bought something, but mm-hmm. if you don't, yeah, just go look. Um, and then of course we got all of our individual stuff. I will get back to streaming. I've been lacking on that pretty hard. You and but, me both. I got to go through my computer right now. Yeah. I so. I think I, that's my next step, too, is new computer. Yeah. Um, fun stuff. Well, so, all right, man. Well, that's going to be I'm Baron J67. I'm T Jones. Peace.